Somebody wants you to get a basket of oysters, do exactly that. Start shaking them around in the water, agitate it. You don't want to just put your hand in because of animals that might be in there. So this morning we had a baby leather jacket. It was about that big in there. You can get crabs. You also get what's oh, called bull <laughs> rats. Oh, sorry. Okay. You get bull rats, which are very spiky fish. And when you pick them up, they're not venomous, but the spike really, really hurts. <laughs> Alright, now if we find a bit of shade, I'll put these over there. And we can get them out and play with them. It's no problem when I pull them apart like that. Uh, it regrows. It comes out from the side to attach. Now we're back to the spat stage of baby oysters. That's the travelling stage in their life. Anybody want to hold a group of oysters? Um, that's the travelling stage. So they're looking for their place to settle. So we have um, at this stage every single species of oyster behaves in the same way and it's looking for that place to sit So if you're a Sydney rock oyster, you're looking for somewhere to cement yourself to and stay there for life. If you're an Akoya oyster, 
if you're looking for somewhere just to sit. So a boy of oysters in their life will move about that much. <laughs> and that's when they're hot, when they're cold, when they're really warm, the basket, they're all spread out. Mm. Think of us with our family and our lounge rooms. When it's really hot, you're all sitting on So it takes two years for the boy to go from start to adult. Sydney Rock Oysters, naturally in the wild, it takes them two years. Um, there are some that come from hatcheries that are genetically modified so that they speed up that process and they're ready to go in one year. So, for the two years that we're looking after the oyster, now we're breeding in a hatchery, we're not letting them just do it in the wild. And we're doing that so that we can keep up our oyster family tree, we can have oyster A, breed with oyster D, certain characteristics that we want in and certain characteristics we don't want in. So we have our breeding oysters and when they look like they're about to spawn, we put them all in separate containers so we can do it that way. Um, so when we bring them down from the hatchery, we have them in baby baskets. Whenever you get sick of cuddling your oysters, just let me know. So, you think in this day and age high-tech stuff would be the go, but no. Oysters like old school garden mesh. In the hatchery we put this in the pool for them and they settle on it. That's how they come to us. <laughs> we then put them in their first basket. So this is the baby basket, their first foray into a water. Yeah, it's about in a good good spawning session we have we have about 10 million. A uh, bad spawning session for us is 5 million, and if you have the 5 million stuff, we discard and go in here. <coughs> so, in here you've got about 100,000 little oysters. In there, put the little, they go out in the water. Now, the ones on the outside are more prone to predators, and in this, at this stage, the predators are along those fish, so think leather jackets. Um, a couple of years ago, we could pull up the basket like this and the leather jackets would still stay attached. They were that desperate to get the oysters. Mm -hmm. um, so we've tried pool netting and so far, so good. We'll try, when that doesn't work, we'll try something else. Yeah. Yes, yep. So they stay in that, they grow, when they're oh, probably that big, we move them to the next basket. And we don't count the oysters at this stage. We move them, we put a cup and a half into the next basket of And to get them off this mesh, very long, very tedious job. You take the thing out, you flatten it all out, and you pull off the oyster by the So, oyster baskets are just like primary school. So how long did you say it took to get to that stage? To, when they come down from the hatchery, they're about six weeks. Uh, they'll move from that basket at maybe the four months stage, three to four months. It all depends on growth. Um, also, with oysters, you have your front runners and you have the ones that are way below average that catch up. And it's fascinating to look at. Because I, I do have two oysters one's this big, one's that big, exactly the same breeding program. By the two year stage, this little one will have caught up. It's just the way that this takes a bit of time. Whereas the other one just raced ahead. So we move them from basket to basket as they get, as they get bigger and as this shell gets stronger. Um, so that is just a matter of watching them grow. We have certain spots we put them to get to get the growth happening. Certain spots for summer, certain spots for winter. It all depends on the weather. Do you feed them anything? Sorry? Do you feed them? No, they eat algae. In when we are breeding at the hatchery, that's the most expensive part of the whole breeding process is keeping the algae out to them. Because it's sort of like an algae salad, they've got to mix up the different types that they specifically like. But it's the CSIRO that makes the algae. They're the only people that can make it. And it's pretty expensive. It's got to be brought in. It's got to be fresh. Oh, all of that. It's fresh water. No, it's salt water. 
So this is salt water. Yeah. 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 Um, but the algae has to be made fresh, like grown fresh. It can't be. I bought it six months ago and it's, yeah. So we go from this basket, we move on to the next one. By this stage, this is about the year stage. My oysters are probably about that big, your average size. Um, they're able to ward off small crabs and things like that. They've got a stronger shell. From there, we move into this basket over here. Now, it was just last week we had this problem. Some oysters were put in the wrong baskets. <laughs> what that meant for these oysters? Come on, guys, in we go. What that meant for these oysters, they're in the smaller mesh version. Um, predators were getting in. So we brought some oysters in and somebody said to me, oh, why have they got why, why they got holes out of them? Is that the guys cleaning them? Or is that something else? They had big chomp marks out of them. That's because the crab had gotten in and had a bit of a go. <laughs> why had the crab gotten in? Because the mesh was too big and the crab could just walk straight in. So we had to do a rush job last week and change all these baskets to the right mesh. Mm. And make sure we keep the basket closed nice and tight. Mm. Um, another another predator, our public enemy number one is the octopus. Mm. Octopus love oysters. Um, your normal octopus, once they've found a basket or they've found a crab trap or all this, that you need to move that because the octopus knows where it is. Now they'll keep coming back like, like drive through McDonald's. <laughs> um, so they'll keep coming back. Got to move. But up on Brisbane Water in the Central Coast, our problem octopus are blue ringed octopus. So in the heat of summer, we farm here, that's for them a day when we're cleaning things. And they're sly little things. So, not content to just get in and eat our oysters, they also want to use the shell too, particularly the females. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. You're alright, you're getting a little bit. Hey, she goes back. So, how long can you harvest? Sorry? How long can you harvest before they need to be processed? Um, so, it's. Well, at the moment today, we've got a really hot day and I'm just looking at their shells are getting a bit on the dry side. Mm. So I'll put them back. I, they, if I left them out for a couple of hours, they'd get quite sick. And how do I know an oyster's sick? Oh, it doesn't close its shell properly. Mm. And I can push on it and it really doesn't care. Mm. So you don't want that to happen. Very well. Freshly clean oysters. So the blue ringed octopus, the females will get in the shell and get in there with their eggs. They close the shell around them, so to me it looks like another oyster. You pick it up, you see a tentacle coming out, something's not right. <laughs> so that's why it's important to really disturb the basket before you touch it. So you're shaking it, give it a bash, you know, the oysters will be fine, they'll be good shaking, but they'll be fine. Um, what we do with all the predators is we, we do have a rehab tank back at the shed in Brisbane Water. Um, if something's a bit, a bit dopey or needs a bit of help, we'll put it in that tank, let it just recuperate and then back out it goes in the water. So we probably see the same octopus every week. Mm -hmm. So we we'll stop that just that. So at the moment, the octopus is that are down here in the big ones, and won't get in from here. Um, that was the bigger mesh that was the problem. So we had our run with octopus uh, about six weeks ago. Um, yeah, two of the guys came back and they said, oh, we got lunch tomorrow. And I said, oh, right, what, what crab is this time? And they said, no, look at this. It's a big octopus. Yuck. And then Jack, one of the other guys that works with us, he found one. And then the following day he found a very big bull out and he posted a very funny video to us about it. I was sitting in my car laughing. I mean, he could have been seriously hurt, but the way he explained it was funny. <laughs> but it's part of the it's part of the farm thing. 
and the animals don't want to hurt you, they just, that's their defence. 